Welcome back, everyone, to another exhibition match. Zero K, I am your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match between Thurks on Jump Bots and Magman on Cloaky on Fallendell. And apparently Thurks has been training up a lot, so this could be a very even match. And Magman, long-time player, reasonably strong. Thurks, a considerably newer player who I believe was in the tournament a couple weeks ago. And were, they didn't do great, but if they've been training up, I'm really excited to see what they've come up with. So with that, Thurk's going for pretty early aggressive start. Pyro Puppy on bit of construction, whereas Magman going for a highly aggressive start, opening with five glaives. Strong early raid. This is a highly aggressive early raid. I have to think of when's the last time I actually saw a match that started this way. <laughs> Oftentimes it's like two or three glaives, maybe for scouting or from defense or whatever, like one for scouting, a couple back for defense or whatever. But no, five forward to raid. They won't kill the commander if they find it. You need six or seven to do that, depending on how you micro them. But if they find the base, it's totally undefended. However, it looks like Magman is going to be a little unlucky. They're going around near Thurks' commander. Oh, Thurks, do they see it? They do have radar coverage of it because the commander is there. So they know something is up. Same time with Magman. They see the stuff coming in. They see that there is a pyro coming in, but... It's unclear what they're going to do to respond to it. Four glaives against a pyro. Kind of an even match. Really depends on placement. Magman, however, not too confident. They can micro both fights at the same time. Not going for the assault in the back lines. Bit of a lost opportunity, but I can understand why they wouldn't go for it. Still, the back lines are totally open. Or were. I mean, now with the pyro just about being finished, it wouldn't be as easy, but... Yeah, this is going to be tricky. Magman's basically just waiting for their opportunity. Going for the commander, would not recommend, but that is what Magman is doing. I think they're thinking about when commanders didn't have the starting lotus beam, and that's... Yeah, that's no longer the case. Yeah, it used to be the case that a recon commander would be taken out by four glaives, no problem. But now, ever since, like, a year, year and a half ago... There's the automatic light, the Lotus Beam, basically, that commanders have by default. And you are not contesting that without, like I said, seven, six, seven glaives minimum. And that's if you're microing really well. I'd recommend at least eight. So I think Magman might have forgotten that the commanders got buffed like a year or so ago. Again, muscle memory is really hard to get over in this game. It's one of the, it's one of the things about this game, because it is such a fast game... Like, players can often develop certain ideas about how the game works, like rough heuristics and such, that might change with balance patches, but it's or just rough heuristics about what broad strategies work, and also obviously what numbers of units work in certain situations, that don't always hold. Still, good kill on the constable. Very strong kill, and this should be enough glaive to care take care of the Lotus. They'll lose two or three of their number in the process, but there it is. Unfortunately, do not stand next... Okay, good. Don't stand next to the metal extractor. That is death. Still, Magman... Stronger army. A bit better on attrition. Having a much harder time actually winning on the economy game just because... Well... Thurks is expanding faster. Thurks has more units going around to expand. Their command is going out to expand a bit more aggressively. Magman now catching up, but even having lost a couple metal extractors over to the north, or a metal extractor over to the north, Thurx isn't really hurting. Magman not going to go for the main base, though. Unfortunate, because if they did, they'd have no resistance, and that's seven metal per second right there. It's like a quarter of Thurx's economy. But they aren't going for it. They also stuff the Firewalker before it gets built. Yeah, that's one of those things that, like, that's why sparrows exist. And granted, it can be hard again, muscle memory, and also just hard to remember. There's a lot of things to remember, so I understand. But, yeah, sparrow is handy for that sort of thing. Especially early game, because if your opponent has no defenses in the main base, just go for it. There's no reason not to attack it. Especially with as many units as 
Magman has. Like, even the four glaives here, there's no defenses that they'd be able to take out the factory and everything quickly enough. Wouldn't be a problem. However, Thurks is still just expanding. No real threats for them. Magman almost caught up in economy. It's just they're being very slow about it. The one thing Magman does have... Ooh, Thurks Commander getting heavily attacked. No, not lightly attacked. Slightly damaged. But yeah, the one thing that Magman has going for them is they do have a bit more production capacity. They aren't accessing. That is not much, but it's still a thing. And that means there's at least some hope for them to be able to get their armies to overwhelm Thurks. However, that hope is soon to be dashed as Thurks is building up a couple caretakers. And with those caretakers, should be able to completely overwhelm. And not to mention, of course, you know, Pyros are really strong against Mask Glaive, especially when you're not line moving. I know Magma knows how to line move. I don't know why they don't more often. But especially, especially when you're dealing with line splash like this, it's like, point moving your units is a great way to get them all killed. I mean, it's generally true, and I don't know why Magman doesn't just line move. I don't know, line moves easy. Maybe I just have my mouse settings really fast, because I, I play a lot of Quake, but I don't know. I mean, I do have a mouse settings really fast, and it is because I play a lot of Quake, but that's not... I don't think that's such a big deal when it comes to line move. Uh, okay, Kettlebore pointing out that... Okay, I, okay, yes, they would get cut off, but you could still, like, line move like this. Like, setting up almost little boxes. Or, I think, Control-Alt. If I recall correctly, Control-Alt... Right, okay, can't demonstrate right now. But I think Control-Alt-Click will set them up in a... Essentially, the shape they are in now. So you can kind of space them out into a bit of a box. Like, or a larger group that's less splash damage vulnerable. That'll at least be useful. But, yeah, no, in this case, no, they're all just dying. Or spread them out during the attack. Like, I don't know. I think you're underestimating line move here, Ketaborli. There's a lot of open spaces that, you know, having a nice concave of glaives would make them far more effective against the Pyros than a giant blob of glaives that just got completely wrecked and burned to death. And there were, okay, there were a few line moves, but it's just, again, it's just spreading out your units. It's, I mean, okay, I should be more fundamental here. Getting your units into a nice concave is the important thing. Line move is just a very, very effective bit of input sugar that allows you to do it in a single stroke. Like, literally stroke of the mouse. Like, it's just, and we see it a little bit here, but the important thing is more the concave. The important thing is the spread. Using line moves means to that end, but that is the important end. Which is what I'm saying. You can use like control, alt, click, or whatever to maintain formation as you go across. But that concave, that spread to avoid splash damage is the most important thing. Also, it's worth pointing out that glaives cannot shoot past each other, since they <clears throat> their fire point is pretty close to their head. So occasionally they can kind of shoot past each other's shoulders, but by and large they can't shoot past each other. So if you don't, if you have them clumped up, only the front line is working. They're kind of like melee units, honestly. And you almost have to treat them as such. They have some range, but it's so short, and they have such a hard time actually working past each other that you might as well treat them like melee units. As far as actual theory goes, in terms of how you use them. So yeah, big blob, not so useful. Sorry, I'm ranting here, because otherwise, like, everything else is pretty standard. Thurx has gotten all of their production capacity online. They're not expanding as much as they could be, but they do have the reclaim, and they are not taking advantage of it. Actually, that is a big thing. I'm really surprised at that. They got plenty. They got like a thousand plus metal reclaim in their base area alone. Our the commander taking some damage, not too threatened. Could use some repairs, though. But still, the moderators and pyros putting a stop to that. And honestly, Thurks, almost 2,000 metal attrition bonus, and there's more glaives coming in there. Kill off a pyro, but not much else. At the same time, all of those reavers going down is a huge blow for Magman. 
That being said, they do have a lot of production capacity. They do have a lot of metal coming in. Or at least had with the reclaim. So that is something. But I don't think it's helping out. I mean, if we look at the numbers here, Magman is actually behind in terms of metal production. They're about even in terms of metal use. And army value, they're way behind. And if you look at the numbers, well, the difference in attrition, I mean, it's about 1,500 in difference of attrition. So half of that is attrition, half of that is production. Like, Thirx is just running away with this game in terms of the economy and in terms of production. So there was a bit of excess early on, but once the caretakers got set up, it's been fine. I will admit, though, Thirx might want to set up another caretaker. Just for the sake of having that extra reserve for when they start building up or start reclaiming. Because, again, they ought to start reclaiming this stuff, and when they do, they are not going to have the production capacity in their factory to use it. Ooh, speaking... Well, that's speaking of production capacity, but speaking of the economy, though, Glaive's coming along the side. This is a pretty okay use of Glaive's. Be careful of the pyros, make sure not to get hit by them. Going for the commander, this won't kill the commander because they'll jump, but... No, never, they won't jump! No, that did kill the commander, because it didn't jump! Ah, why... I guess Thirks just didn't notice that in time. So I could actually just hit the jump key and fire it away. Yeah, that's... That's an important thing to have hockey. However, Magnet's commander will be going down, and there is nothing Magnet can do to stop it. So Thurks at least doesn't let that blow go unanswered. And that means Thurks essentially has full control. Like, Magnet lost a forward constructor with nothing else supporting it. Thurks lost a forward constructor, but had a bunch of army behind it that just happened to be out of position. So this is Magnet's last-ditch effort. These Reavers and Glaives are it. If Magman does not destroy Thirx's army with this army here right now, it's over. This is it. And Magman actually managing to do a little bit of pushing. But again, it's more a matter of the moderators just want to retreat. Like, moderators are long-range units, and this is the range they want to operate in. Staying as far away from the Reavers as possible. However, the Glaives taking advantage of some of the distraction to go and take out some metal extractors. It's just, that's not enough. Again, it comes down to, can this army from Magman here, these three Reavers really, get rid of the Mod Raiders, and the answer is obviously no. The Mod Raiders just outrange them, and that is it. The Glaives on the north side of the map get rid of the Pyros at great cost, won't be able to take care of the Constable, and that is basically it. Thurks on the snapback will be able to wipe out essentially everything. Rapid Stinger construction will be coming in, but it's just not going to be enough to protect everything. I mean, Magman... I don't even think it's going to protect itself. Pyro's coming in here a little bit too fast. And that Stinger will be... Oh, won't be going down. Oh, the Reavers save it! But that Stinger's not going to be enough. That's a small thing, but it's... It's a thing. Small attempt from Magman to continue to harass around Thirx's periphery. But ultimately, not enough. This is the only real asset. And even that, I think... Moderators might be able to outrange it. Range 620. No, they don't. They absolutely don't. It's, it's a completely different, completely different tier of range. That Stardust, sorry, Stardust, that the Stinger is going to be dealing significant damage, but honestly, it could be. If Thurks attacked right now, they'd be able to take it all out. Like, the moderators would one-shot the Stinger, one-shot the other Stinger construction. The Pyros could come in and burn up everything in, in here. However, Thurks is playing it safe. Again, a bit of scouting would go a long way, but at least they know there's not a whole lot over to the north. They can take it out with their pyros and slow down Magman's production. Granted, Magman is entirely relying on reclaim right now. And they've got, well, 10 seconds worth of the reclaim pace that they're going, but still, they have some reclaim to work with. But again, the reliance on glaives here is not well advised. However, the shift over to hovercraft is pretty well advised. Surprised we're not seeing halberds come in to basically stuff the moderators, but we aren't. We are, however, seeing a lot of stingers. It's not stingers. Scalpels. Yeah, we are seeing a lot of stingers, too. We're seeing the scalpels come in to try to take this out. Still, though, Thurx is operating at a massive advantage, economically speaking. They haven't even started reclaiming yet. If they did, this game would be over. And there's that stinger going down. The conjurers have been gone way too far afield. They are... Well, half of them are going to burn to death. Others should be fine. 
Yeah, another couple of burn to death despite the repairs. Unfortunately, not quite triaging the repairs perfectly, but uh, it's only four down out of out of thirteen. So quarter lost, not the worst thing in the world. However, the worst thing in the world is yet to come, as Thurks basically hasn't lost their army this entire time. <laughs> the chat pointing out that's that. Uh, Draskal is throwing out Thirk's status in the bag with Catapult responding. Yeah, new players have the ability to throw things out of bags. It's a special skill they can pull out of nowhere. Uh, so, Thirk's might not have this. I mean, it's... I think they have this. They can... They could push in. And they certainly have a strong economy to back them up. Although, they're at the point where another caretaker would be advised. Or a fact switch, actually. At this stage. I mean, I don't know what you'd fact switch to. Because honestly, the only other thing you'd need would be Firewalkers. And, well, they're already playing Jump Bot, so they can already just build Firewalkers. I mean, considering, well, they don't really need anything other than initiative. Like, they just need to push in. That's it. They already have the composition they need. And some decent raiding choices, too. But yeah, the composition they need is just the moderators, really. There's not nothing that's been built up to counter that. Scalpels are up, but they're basically to deal with the pyros. They're not going to do much against the moderators. They're going to do something against the pyros, though, as we can see very clearly. But yeah, the moderators are the real problem. And, oh. Oh! Nice! That was really strong. Thurk's taking out the radar. That was the only thing Magman had to see Thurk's army positioning. Now Thurk can move with impunity. And that's exactly what they're doing. Having taken out the radar, they're realizing, hey, Magman has no idea what I'm doing. Let's rip him to shreds. And that's exactly what happens. Those are the conjurers down. And now it's just a matter of breaking through the stingers. If, if that, honestly. This contain is solid. And there's nothing that can really scout it out unless a re radar gets rebuilt. And I don't see the radar getting rebuilt here. Magman going over to the north trying to deal with some... More or deal some more harassment damage, maybe take out a few metal extractors, but Thirx is still way ahead. And there's the fact which actually to air. Which I was kind of thinking is, you know, air gets you owls and then you can use those as scout. And also air is a reasonably strong choice. I mean you can get a few ravens, take out the caretakers pretty easily. It's not a bad idea. If you have nothing else like if you want a fact switch and you have no other fact switch options that come to mind in terms of what units you might need. Air isn't a bad choice. But so far, Magman is just pushing Thurks everywhere, like every which way, like really forcing Thurks to have to reconsider where they're going. And unfortunately, it has weakened the contain. Moderators being somewhat spread out around the map, and Magman taking advantage of this to reclaim, and that's the only reason Magman still has a chance here, is because of that reclaim. But that is... Not enough for them, and they throw in the towel, which, I mean, is understandable. I do think there was a bit of a chance that they were opening themselves up for. But, yeah, at the same time, Thurks had that game for, like, five minutes. It's like, the longer the game went, the more Magman would have been able to get back into it. Because Thurks wasn't really escalating, and Magman was using a lot of reclaim and rebuilding from that. But Thurk still wins that game. Magman throwing the towel and Thurk's taking it with a really strong economy, very strong army, and overall just keeping the attrition advantage and keeping the pressure on. At almost no point in the game did Thurk's have a disadvantage against Magman. But also Thurk's just knew what units to use. It was a constant unit type advantage in favor of Thurk's. So well done to them. Anyway, the last replay for tonight is going to be one that I just sort of picked out. It's going to be Dan Warrior versus Luchin Chans on Sparkle's Reef. That will be up in a few minutes because I want to see what has gone on with. I gotta. Why is there Windows noises? I turn you off. Anyway. Because I want to see what's going on with this map because it's not in the tournament and it played really well i want to see it again stay tuned we'll be back in a couple minutes <laughs> 